and our movie begins with a bit of a cryptic scene as American soldiers race through a village trying to shoot at an unseen attacker. There were so many people yelling and panicking and trying to get away, and one of the soldiers who was there trying to evacuate the people is knocked out unconscious from a blast that came from the enemy. And in some bizarre situation, he wakes up in a prison cell. He tries to look around, trying to figure out how he got there or where he is, as he's completely forgotten who he is or how he got there. Everything around him was in disarray, and he almost gets electrocuted from a loose wire, but he subtly notices the current clinging on to his hand, but this dude had much bigger problems to worry about. And when he removes a brick from the wall and looks outside, he realizes the gravity of his situation and begins shouting for help. But apparently, he gets told to shut up as there was a woman next to his cell. The woman introduces herself as Nadia, and when she asks him who he was, he didn't even know his name. And when she tells him that he's in Nairobi, Kenya, he was even more confused cause he didn't know where that was. Nadia tells him to be quiet cause what she feared most was actually people instead of the machines out there destroying people. And soon, in just a bit, a bunch of armed Kenyan men enter the police station and they try to take him for ransom cause he's American and they were about to have their way with Nadia until she fights back and kills both the men that were trying to rape her. And the guy, after fighting off some of the men, comes back to save her and he notices that she didn't actually require a lot of saving and since he didn't know who he was, she sees the words Bo on his shirt and she decides to give him that name. And Bo here figures out that he's a soldier and he decides to find his base because he figured if I'm a soldier and I was stationed in Kenya, there's probably some kind of base where I operated from. As soon as they leave the police station, Nadia and informs him that there's a US military base north from their location, and Bo decides to go over there and makes it his mission, and even though Nadia didn't want to come, he tells her that he'd go without her, and then they decide to gather as much food and water as they can, and they decide to head over there. And to their luck, they find some canned foods and some water bottles, and they also spot a car that's functional. But after traveling for a bit, they get ambushed by a bunch of military men, and since they were outgunned and the military guys had the advantage of the hill and they did shoot their tires, they walk out of the car slowly and try to explain themselves. Nadia tries to talk to the captain, telling him that Bo's a soldier and that he wants to communicate with the US Army and that he's there to help, but to their surprise, first they discover that Bo can speak Swahili, and the Kenyan captain also tells them that there is no US military anymore as the machines have taken them all out. But then, all of a sudden, one of the soldiers that had his AK aimed at Bo notices a tattoo on his arm and he starts to freak out. He starts referring to the tattoo as a dish, and just before he shot Bo, out of panic, Bo disarms the man and shoots down all of the men that were surrounding them, and he asks the captain, at gunpoint, what his man was talking about. And the captain explains that there's a dish located around the Kenyan border that's actually owned by the Americans, and many people in Kenya believe that the Americans were the ones that invited those machines to Earth using that satellite because everything was destroyed by the machines aside from that satellite itself. Bo couldn't believe what he was hearing and claims that it was a lie. Then him and Nadia take the captain's G and they make their way toward the camp. And even though he didn't want to believe it, there was this arrow, a scar that was pointed at that tattoo, and it seemed as though it was self-inflicted. And to make matters worse, Bo couldn't figure out if he was responsible for all this or what was actually going on with him. And from the way he took down those soldiers easily and from the fact that he can speak multiple languages, Nadia deduces that he's probably special forces as he's got advanced combat skills and clearly he knows how to get himself out of a tough situation. On their car ride, Nadia starts to wonder if she can really trust Bo. I mean, what if the Kenyans were right and the Americans actually did cause what was going on? And when she actually hints at this idea to Bo, he tells her that if that's true, they'll kill all of them when they get to the base. After a couple of hours of driving, they couldn't drive any further as the road was riddled in mines and they're forced to go through a town. Their original plan was to avoid towns as the machines target heavily populated areas because their mission is just to track and kill. And just a few moments later, they encounter one of the alien and machines that tries to destroy them and they drive as fast as they could. And in just a bit, their car stops working and they had to leave their jeep and take cover. And as they were hiding from the very big and scary machine that could incinerate them in a matter of seconds, they notice a father and a daughter trying to do the same. And they see the father attempting to get the machine's attention to try and steer it away from his daughter. And even though Nadia wanted to intervene, both the daughter and the dad end up getting killed. It was a pretty heartbreaking scene to watch and Nadia, being a daughter, 
doctor and a woman was really emotional after the incident, and the machine, after killing the little girl and the dad, just goes away as it didn't really spot Nadia and Bo. Since the sun was setting, they decide to make camp and light a fire, and Nadia talks about how her entire family is probably gone, as all the big cities like Paris, which is where she's from, were hit first by the aliens. And Bo tries to relate to her situation, as he doesn't even know who he is, and he talks about how he could potentially also be alone, as he found himself in a foreign country with a gun in his hand, and he figures he wouldn't really be living that kind of life if he had a family back home. And as our two protagonists were having their heart to heart, they notice fighter jets flying above, then a wave of relief washes over them as they realize that somebody out there is still fighting. In the morning, they walk toward their destination, but Nadia makes them stop as she claims that she's hearing this sound that's coming from really far away. Bo doesn't really notice anything, but as they walked further and further in, they encounter this camp that was deserted and destroyed. They find a monkey in a cage, which is pretty cute, and they also notice a radio that was making the sound that Nadia was hearing. And obviously, in just a flash, they realize that it was a trap. How do they realize that, you may be asking? Well, they find out that they were surrounded by a bunch of poachers who were heavily armed. The poachers take away their guns, and they drag them to this weird location in town. They then continue to chain them up on this car, and they wait for one of the machines to arrive to take it down, using Bo and Nadia as bait. To their credit, these dudes really did have a plan set up, and they even had booby traps and bombs for the machines, and were also using some kind of generator that was supposed to electrocute the machines, but unfortunately they were no match for the aliens as most of them get wiped out, and Bo and Nadia managed to free themselves from their restraints and hide until the machines left. And in the morning, they got up and kept walking toward the border as they wanted to locate that military base that Bo was talking about. As they were crossing a bridge, Bo spots a reflection from what he thought was a sniper, but he sees that it's just a man crouching under a tree that was using his camera. The man, who goes by the name Stander, was under the tree because he was shot and bleeding to death, and he happens to be a photographer that was just caught up in this whole alien madness. Technically, it wouldn't matter where he was, he would have still been dead because the alien invasion is global. Stander explains how he was on a mission for six weeks, doing a story on child soldiers, and how he captured everything he could when the machines were taking over the world, and how he has this beautiful picture picture of a child standing down a giant machine that was about to destroy it, and he plans to use that image to rally a resistance against the machines, as he believes that it's what human beings need is to stimulate the human spirit and to fight against all odds. But unfortunately, he's just bleeding out under a tree, and before they talk any further, they hear the machines approaching and drag him into some dilapidated warehouse. While he was there, Stander knew his fate and that he would just bleed out in pain and then die, and he began to beg Bo to put a bullet in his head and in exchange he'd give him the camera as the camera had a picture of the base and Bo could use all the images to track where the base actually is but the only way Stander was willing to trade it was if Bo shot him to death as he didn't want to suffer anymore. And to everyone's surprise, Bo refuses to shoot him even after Stander started making sounds that would attract the machines and Nadia decides to step up and she does the job by choking Stander to death. I gotta say, it was a baller move. And after she killed him, Bo and Nadia start traveling again, and they use the camera to locate where Stander actually took that picture of that satellite, but unfortunately before they got there, the battery dies, but to their luck, Bo finds a car and after repairing it, they get back on the road again. But their luck wasn't so good as hundreds of the machines start chasing after them, and they have to take refuge in a small house in the middle of nowhere. And finally, after all this bonding and hanging out together and driving, just before Bo kisses Nadia, a giant mothership beams up half of the house with Nadia along with it, and there was nothing the Bo can do. He falls on the ground and gets knocked unconscious again, and he wakes up to a big piece of wood stuck in his thigh. After pulling it out, he makes his way to the military base into that satellite that the people were talking about, but he finds that everything has been destroyed and there was nothing left. Feeling helpless about his situation, he walks into town and crouches under a building, but then he notices a bunch of people just running around with their guns, trying to take down some of the machines. As he was sitting there, one of the spider-like machines makes its way to Bo, and it scans him but leaves right after, and Bo loses consciousness again and he wakes up in this mass hospital. The people that had to drag him over there, Kara and Juma, introduced themselves to him and they discover that he can speak their language and they ask him what he was doing in that town. 
and he explains his situation and he also tells them that the machines didn't take him and when they hear this they decide to take him to Roderick, their engineer. This Roderick guy was quite the engineer and he was able to build an EMP machine that had the ability to take down the machines. But their conversation doesn't go much further as Bo starts to remember what exactly happened to him before he blacked out and forgot who he was and in that instant they receive an alert as many machines were approaching their location and Bo tells them that they're actually there because of him as the machines have implanted something inside his spine and they were using him to track other human beings. As soon as he says this, Kara loses it and tries to shoot him, but Juma tries to calm her down and Bo himself tells them that he can get the big EMP machine near the ship as the machines don't really harm him because they're using him to track other human beings. After sneaking around the parking lot to get outside, the machines take out most of their crew, including Kara who sacrifices herself because she got shot, and when they finally make it outside, they see the machines rounding up a bunch of people to be taken by the mothership. Bo distracts one of the ships and they lose formation, and most of the people could have escaped, but when Bo confronted the machine with just a rock, most of them stay behind and they use whatever they can find to fight the machines, but that didn't really matter much as one of the aliens shot at their EMP machine and it was losing power. But to their luck in that instant, Bo discovers that whatever it was that they put inside of him enabled him to be a conductor of electricity, and he gave the EMP power himself from one of the machines that was shot down, and as soon as the EMP had enough power, and blasted the mothership to the ground. And just when I thought the bow died from all the current that was running through his body, he actually wakes up and it seems as though the electricity made him remember who he was, but he still decides to keep the name Bo. And the movie ends as everyone tries to leave the area, and Bo is carried away by two of the resistance soldiers. I wonder what his name was before Nadia started calling him Bo. Hmm. Anyways, that is how our movie comes to an end.